This is a story of a girl who was given a second chance in life, who seized the opportunity to achieve her dreams and escaped an unimaginable threat to her family and life, the Taliban. The Taliban is now effectively in control. A regressive tale of human rights abuses. Civilians beg for a chance at freedom. Desperate to flee Taliban rule. It has changed millions of lives, especially the lives of Afghan women. When the Taliban stormed back to power in 2021, it brought back terrible memories for Nadia Nadim. My father, who was a general in the Afghan army, is brutally killed by the Taliban. Which made the life for us as a family very, very difficult. Ten years old, with my mom and four sisters, in a place where you can't go to school, go to work, or have a normal life. It's a place where dreams are not allowed. But Nadia's mom refused to let her daughter's dreams be crushed. My mom is a very smart lady and, and uh, someone who doesn't back down easily. You know, we were homeschooled for a very long time. If they found out that my mom was doing this kind of stuff, uh, they'll probably kill her as well. Home is supposed to be a safe place. So what do you do when that safety no longer exists? At a certain point, it just got too much. And, and, and she knew that we have no future in Afghanistan. So um, in 2000, we decided to leave the country. We got smuggled out of the country through a long route. Through Pakistan with fake passports, through Italy, and then with a, on a truck, we ended up in Denmark. In Denmark, Nadia stayed in a refugee camp for six months. It was there that she saw something that made her finally feel like she was at home. I'm at this refugee camp. We're surrounded by woods, and just beside the camp, there's these, this football club with these amazing football fields. Uh, and that's the first time I saw girls play football. I've never seen that before. Not only football, no sport. I was like, whoa, this is possible. There isn't particularly one girl, and she's amazing. The stuff she does with the ball is unbelievable. And now I want to play this game. This is where the reality hits. She never seen any woman play any sports. This is where I kind of can relate to her because in my family, I never saw a woman play any type of sports. But I was lucky enough, I grew up in Sweden and I saw a woman playing sports. They are my role model, the society. So I can understand that connections, like she's a maze. And that's the beauty of the sport. Like, no matter if you have experience or not, we're all still connected. It was love at first sight, you know, I had one of those moments uh, where my eyes were popping out of my heart was pumping. It reminded her of her favorite memory from when she was a kid in Afghanistan. With my dad in uh, our backyard, we had a football ball, then he showed us what to do with it. I was like trying to kick it around. That was the first time I remembered clearly. That's why like these moments playing with him, toying around, fooling around, are still stuck with me because that was like the happy moment. And he loved sports and also loved football. He was the first person who gave us a, a, you know, one of them old footballs. With her passion for the game reignited, she set a goal for herself. Every night when my head hits the pillow, I dream of becoming a footballer. One day I was like, oh, I really kind of want to train the way they're doing. Went and asked the coach, just went and asked if I could play. She was finally able to play the sport that she loved but it wasn't easy. And I knew that, you know, I have to fight or work harder than a Danish girl. I have to prove myself every day because you're the outsider. Already looking different is already a lot of pressure. All eyes all on you. So what it was powerful in this situation with Nadia, instead of pushing herself down and be unmotivated, what she did, she took this power and turned it like, I'm gonna show you like a Danish girl can look like this. This fight's always been there, and then you add on top of that, me being looking different than all the Danish national team players, um, speaking probably differently, having a different attitude towards things. It's always been hard. Talking about representation, during Euro Cup, Nadia, she was playing like a star, and then she led Denmark to the finals, and the only thing that politicians could talk about who is this girl criticizing her instead of celebrating her? Why is this refugee girl taking so many headlines? Because I'm kicking ass. Nadia Nadim and her extraordinary journey. Nadia. Danish football legend. Nadia became a football sensation, playing her way up to the Champions League in Europe. She made such an impact that she got recruited to the National Women's Football League, establishing a new home for her in the US. I felt 
very loved and appreciated when I was Portland. And you know, the fans, the way they treated me, I felt I was a part of them. Same way when I arrived in Kentucky, Louisville, I think the, the people here around you, they, they just seem so genuine and I felt home. But wherever Nadia went, she knew where her true home was. Of course, and where my mom is. You know, I think my mom and my siblings, they're my family and everyone, where they are, that's my home. But then suddenly, Nadia's home was uprooted again. Started receiving a lot of messages from family. No one was really telling me what was happening. Everyone was like, have you heard? Are you on your way? I got a call from my cousin and he had told me that my mom had passed away. While she was broadcasting for the Men's World Cup in Qatar, Nadia's mom was killed in a car accident. It's so devastating because it's like the mom went through so much already. All this journey has been a struggle running away from the Taliban, all the way to Denmark to finally give this freedom to her daughters. And then this tragedy happened. I really feel she gave us life twice. Once when she gave birth to me and second time when she took me from Afghanistan to Denmark to have a better future, a brighter future. Well, she was always someone who thought of life of being something beautiful. And Nadia was determined to reach even higher to honor the sacrifices her mother made for her. So an 11-year-old from Afghanistan becomes an international football star. It's already a pretty amazing story, but that's not the end of her journey. While she was playing football, at the same time she was starting to become a doctor. Where does she even find the time? I've played 85 national team games. I'm one smasher from being a doctor. She makes the rest of us look lazy. I wanted to do more than just play football. I play football because I love it. It's for myself. It's my hobby, my passion. But I want also to do something that will impact other people's life. For me, I think being a doctor was my calling. I know, you know, some of the ambitions I have is to be in places where you might be the last person to save someone's life. You know? I love the impact that you can have. It brings joy to me. It's weird to, weird to say it, but I am. I feel like so alive when I'm there. Nadia is at home on both the football pitch and in the operation room. Who else can claim to be a world-class athlete and a surgeon? That's mind-blowing. And in the same country where she arrived in the back of a truck years earlier, Nadia was recognized with the highest honor. Last year, I was chosen the Dane of the Year. Yeah, me. Dane of the Year. <laughs> this woman is such an inspiring person, especially for me. Like she's showing us, doesn't matter if you look different, doesn't matter if you talk different, she's telling all of us, go for it. Just go for it. Show people that it's you're a human being as well and then you deserve to be here and then actually you can contribute to the society and actually you can have an impact. Keep believing in yourself, even though there's gonna be a lot of people telling you not to and remember always to have a dream because that's what the two things that always been with me. I was in Kenya the summer in the refugee camp to tell the kids that, hey, I've been a refugee myself, uh, but I somehow came out of it. If I can, so can you. Nadia is taking the field for her first match of the 2023 Women's World Cup. The boundaries that exist are up to you. You put your boundaries and you can always push them.